Now that we've seen how to create a database and create a table and store data in the table, the next step in this lesson is to see how to retrieve data from a table using an SQL select statement. So let's get started writing a Python program to do that. We're going to call it dbquery.py. Let's get that up in our screen. There we go. First step, as always, is to import our library and name it db. Next, we're ready to create a connection object. Next step is a new step we haven't done before. We have to decide how we want to retrieve our data. And the way we want to retrieve data in this particular case is by being able to specify the field name of a row so that we can retrieve one piece of data at a time. That way, later on in the course, when we're looking at how to fill in a particular text box with a piece of data, we'll be able to specify a field individually. The way the data is returned from a database is in a row. And a row consists of the data that makes up each of the individual fields that we've asked for in the select statement. So by typing con.rowfactory equals db row, and notice that the R is capitalized, we're saying that the way we want to retrieve rows is so that we can specify each field using the field name. We'll think of the row as an array, and each field name is an index or an offset into an element of that array, which is actually a row. If that sounded confusing, it'll be very clear once we get to that point in this program. So we're going to set the row factory to db row. Now we're ready to create a cursor object. So we do that next. Now we're ready to write our SQL select statement. So we'll say cursor execute and then select star from films. Then once we have executed the SQL, we need to get the data. And the way we're going to do that is by using a function called fetchall, which will retrieve the whole set of data and store it in a variable, in this case, rows. You can fetch one row at a time, you can fetch a range of rows, or you can use fetch all to return all rows, which is how we want to do it here. Now that we've returned the rows, we're ready to display the data. So we're going to say for row in rows, where we take out one row out of the whole data set and put it in the variable row. Then we're going to use a formatted print statement to display each piece of data. So we have three string objects. And then the data we want to retrieve is the title. There's where the array-like access comes in. Think of row as the array, and title is the index position or the offset. And then the year will come next, followed by the director. And when we're finished, we close everything up. Just to be on the safe side, we'll close the connection. Now we're ready to retrieve data. So we'll save the file, come back to our command prompt window. And there's our data. Annie Hall, 1977, Woody Allen, and The Godfather, 1972, by Francis Ford Coppola. So let's review the script or the program very quickly. We import SQLite 3. Create our connection object by connecting to the database. Tell the system what type of row we want to return. And we want to return a row so that we can access it via each field name. Then we create a cursor. Then we execute our SQL. And I kept the SQL statement simple, especially for those of you who don't know SQL very well. But understand that any legal and valid SQL statement can be used here. Then once we've executed the SQL, we need to retrieve our rows. So we use fetch all to get all of the rows returned by the SQL statement and store it in the object rows. Then we use a for loop to take out each individual row out of the complete data set of rows. And then we display the data using a formatted print statement by extracting each field by using the row as, it, as the base of the array name and then each field name as an offset or an index position. And then when we're finished, we close. The only thing we haven't shown you how to do in this set of lessons is how to delete data 
from a table. And we're going to do that in the final lesson where we put all of this together into one program that creates a table, inserts data, retrieves data, and then we'll have it delete one piece of data from the table just to demonstrate how that works. And we'll see how to do all of that in the next and final lesson of this chapter.